In the first episode of Natter with Nick, I'm talking to Don McCubbin, fisheries biologist and an expert on restoring damaged rivers and streams so that trout, salmon and char can return and thrive. It just happens that he's my son-in-law and father of Isla and Zanti, my grandchildren. Hello, I'm old Nick, C.W. Nickel, and we're in the Afan Woodland Trust in northern Nagano. And with me is my son-in-law, Don McCubbins. He's a, he's a Scot, but uh, he, he has two homes now, one in the north of Vancouver Island and one in North Vancouver. Uh, Don's uh, an expert in uh, not only uh, fisheries, especially salmonids, uh, trout, uh, char, salmon. He's also an expert in restoring uh, damaged rivers and then monitoring them to see um, if the work is, that has been done is effective. And is that pretty well what That's you do? pretty much what we do. Yeah. yeah. Long, it's long-term work. You don't get success right away, but it's very gratifying when you, you get to see changes. You be part of it. I've seen. Well, uh, I did a documentary on uh, on the spirit bear. In fact, that's how we met. Yeah, that's right. That yeah. was what. 14, 15 years ago. Oh, yeah, something like that now. And at that time, we saw a river you that's been worked on for I don't know. Over, I mean, over, over 35 years now. 35 years, the uh, Keo River. And last year, when I visited, mm -hmm. I was astounded at the number of salmon there. Yeah, we had a return of over 100,000 pink salmon. And, uh, and that creates a lot of nutrients to the river, and it's been, uh, it's been great to see the effects. What about some other rivers that you've worked on? Well, I've also worked on some rivers that are affected by hydropower projects. Uh, there's a lot of hydropower in, in Canada as there is in Japan and, and a lot of those rivers are, have reduced flows or different flows than, than they would have done naturally. And One of the biggest ones is the Chakumas River that we work on. We I work went there. to see that too. And there's, wow. the, yeah. Yeah, there's a North Van Outdoor School there, yeah. a, a school that's all about outdoor education and, and they have something like 50 kilometers of salmon spawning channels in their in their acreage and we we watched a new channel being built. Yes, and, and um, they opened it and within 30 minutes or less, it was full of salmon. Indeed, so, so much so that the, my children were nearly catching them with their own hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, and that river actually had a return of, of nearly half a million pink salmon. Mm -hmm. And this year, uh, we estimate around 29 million juvenile salmon went to the ocean from that river. Wow. And I'd, I'd call that recovery. I'd call that recovery. <laughs> Uh, we have a pond behind us, it's called Yayoi Pond. Uh, I dug the pond because um, during the melt, we have a lot of snow here, during the melt there would be um, puddles all over full of tadpoles but then it would uh, dry up and the tadpoles would die. Yeah. So we dug this pond and when I dug down about two meters there were river boulders and shards of Yayoi pottery, about 3,000 years old. Wow. So there must have been a river through here. Hmm. Uh, so I dug the pond to, uh, for the, uh, you know, to make a habitat and also to improve trees. But, and I, I like ponds. I don't so, uh, like dams very much. I can no. see the, and the necessity for dams, but uh, I, I'd like to say to the water, Please wait a while, and then you can go. Mm -hmm. You know, not stop. Yes. What is your thought on dams? Well, you know, d dams, especially hydro dams, which yeah. are operated for power. The problem is that the, r the levels in the lakes go up and down so much mm. that you don't get this natural banking with vegetation and and growth of weeds. You just end up with what's really a reservoir of could be a concrete box full of water. Yeah. for the amount of life that a lot of them have. But again, you know, we're working on some big reservoirs now in British Columbia where we're looking to see the impacts of how things are operated and maybe there's a way we can run them differently but without affecting power production mm -hmm. that can be better for, for fish and, yeah. and fish habitat. The trouble with, uh, with uh, dams, if you don't build them right, is the same that you have with ponds. They silt up. 
They do. And many, many dams around the world have, have, have built it up, and yeah. which were built for power and are no longer really effective for power. In fact, in North America now, quite a lot of dams are being removed mm. and fish habitats being, being restored because they've outlived their, their lifespan. Yeah. Uh, with a pond like this, we will remove the silt and we'll take out all the carp that mm. get in there, especially the crucian carp, uh, and, and we'll, we'll eat them. And we use the silt as a, as a fertilizer because once it's, um, it's aerated, it's, it's a good fertilizer. But when, when I built the pond, I knew what the silt was. Yeah, so, so it's different from the dam. still have to maintain it, yeah. but it's worth it.